Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Toxic Health. I'm here today to talk about the subject of toxic health and that is energy star light bulbs. And uh, we've been told to not to use conventional light bulbs but to use energy star light bulbs. I'm going to show you why you probably don't want to do that. And uh, there's quite a few reasons why you don't want to do that. And the first is that these give out a very spiked spectrum of light. It doesn't occur in nature and it has been extensively proven by a man called Dr. John Nash Ott in his books that he could induce cancer into animals with long-term fluorescent light exposure. So uh, if you're concerned about your health, I would recommend that you obtain a copy of this book and have a read of it. It's a very interesting read. So we're going to test out this light with a standard AM radio. We're tuned into static. You can be tuned into anywhere on the AM band as we're detecting wideband radio waves. So let's turn it on and see what happens. So we can see that we've got radio waves coming out of that light. Let's check this one. Again, we've got radio waves. And I've got another light down here that we're going to do a check on. Let's see what happens. So as we can see, we're picking up on radio waves from all of the compact fluorescent light settings. And that's because they do indeed produce radio waves. And uh, there's a lot of people reporting health problems around them. But we're going to show you some other problems with these light bulbs. And we're going to switch over to using a trifield meter. Now the trifield meter, we're going to use it to detect magnetic fields and electrical fields. So let's start off on magnetic on zero to 100 milligauss and see what we find. So we can see there's magnetic fields around these lamp bulbs. That can be pretty high. Now they say anything over 2 milligauss is a cancer risk. So if you're in these fields, you would actually be at risk of getting cancer. So that's something John Ott found with his lab rats, was that they would get cancer under many of the fluorescent lights that he tested. So let's switch over to electric field. As you can see, we actually have an electric field here. And right under the light, it's actually very large. So if you had your head in this field, you'd probably get sick with long-term exposure to it. You can see it's actually off the scale up at the light. So this is an issue you have like a desk lamp that's very close to your head. So so we're going to talk about LED lamps. So here's an LED lamp that I purchased. I actually ran some tests on it last week and then found that I had seven days of insomnia that followed it. In fact, you know, I'm kind of wondering how long the insomnia is going to last, but certainly my sleep patterns have been off since I played around with this light bulb. And I looked it up online. Apparently it's a common feature of LED lighting, is if you get too much exposure to LED lighting, it ruins your sleep patterns and your melatonin levels. And uh, I would recommend that you, uh, before you purchase one of these LED lights and put them in your home, that you 
research the health effects of these because there are some issues with your health that are well documented online and uh, a search on LED lighting and health effects will bring up some very interesting documentation that you should be aware of. So I don't recommend these light bulbs and nor do I recommend compact fluorescence. And the only light bulb that I actually recommend today is your standard incandescent light bulb that we've been using for probably the last hundred years. It's very well understood and uh, the health problems associated with these are much lesser than any of the other light bulbs. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.